Hey there, Nick Judithakis here. In this video, we're going to be using grep and a couple of other command line tools to extract out specific information from over 50 podcast episodes that were written in Markdown. So check this out. For the last 11 or so months, I've been running a podcast called Running in Production. And every week I talk to a new guest and they talk about how they've built and deployed some type of web application. So I thought it would be kind of cool if I were to write an article on my blog, basically just doing a recap of all of those episodes, picking out like, you know, what were the most popular technologies and like best tips and lessons learned and all that. And, uh, you know, I wrote this, it's not public on my site yet. It will be on uh, October 13th, I think, like whatever that Tuesday happens to be. But there is one aspect of this article where, you know, it goes over like all the best tips and lessons learned. And I wanted to create this bullet list here of basically all of the best tips in every single podcast episode. And I didn't want to have to sit here and go through, you know, 52 of them and uh, by hand, just like copying each one from a specific podcast episode. So check this out. If I go to like the latest uh, published podcast episode and I scroll down here to the show notes, there is this best tips question. And this is something I tried to ask to pretty much everyone on the show, right? It's like, you know, near the end here, uh, I asked them like, what are their best tips and lessons learned, you know, from building and deploying this app? And uh, in pretty much every episode, someone gave an answer to that. But every single episode, you know, what it has in common here is I wrote best tips question mark or like some variant of that that's pretty close. And that is the data that uh, I want to extract out and then uh, convert it to be in this format here and also put the episode number in front of it. And I want to be able to do that just by piping together a couple of command line tools and uh, also using Vim to actually uh, increment these numbers. And we'll get to that uh, near the end. So let me just hop over to a terminal here. And right now we are inside of the uh, podcast directory. And if I do an LS here, we can see, you know, here's a list of all the markdown files for uh, everything that's been published here. So uh, we need to begin by basically using grep, right? We need to pick out specific uh, words or phrases that we want from these episodes. And, you know, it all begins with that. So let's use uh, grep here. And we are going to uh, basically capture uh, the two, two like hyphens, right? So if I go back to the website here, um, back to the episodes, uh, this actually gets converted to like an extended M dash or whatever by the blogging tool that I use, which is Jekyll. But the markdown itself is really just two hyphens. And uh, we actually do need to escape those. And, uh, you know, I'll just do a search here for best tips and then basically capture everything after that uh, recursively for this directory. And if we do a match here, we can see, uh, you know, the font size is a little big, so it's kind of like messy looking on two lines. But we can see that we did extract out, you know, that specific best tips line from every single episode. But uh, if I actually rerun this here and do a word count, you know, it's not enough episodes. There's only 50 matches here, but there's actually quite a bit more than uh, 50 episodes in there. So we need to basically make this search a little bit uh, less strict. That's because when I wrote the best tips like that on each of these episodes, I didn't necessarily write them exactly as like best tips question mark. Like some of them have like lessons learned or like best tips and advice or whatever. So that's why I'm capturing everything after that. So what we actually need to do here is just make this regular expression uh, a little bit, uh, I guess, enhanced, right? We need to do a search for like maybe lessons learned as well. So lessons learned, uh, matching everything after that. And then we'll do a search here and we get nothing because of course, yes, we do need to turn on extended regular expressions. And uh, there we go. So now if I do a word count on this one, then, you know, we do get uh, one more. So let me go back to here. You know, I'll just do the output there. Somewhere in here, there is like lessons learned. I'm not gonna bother trying to, to find it here. I could always search with Tmux, but whatever, it's not important. It's it's here, uh, that's all we need to know. So cool, so we have all of our blog posts now and we have all of the lines that we want, but we don't necessarily wanna get things like, well, one, the file name isn't super important in, in our output. And we also kind of don't want to get this bullet here with the timestamp and, uh, you know, those two hyphens that we searched for. What we actually want to do is if we go back to our grep command here is we want to just return the actual matching text and that is it. So with grep, you can also just do dash O here, which will only return uh, the match, right? So here we have our two hyphens and then we have best tips and then, you know, all the other matches like lessons learned, etc. Uh, we still have the file name, but that's actually going to be pretty important in a second. So I'm not gonna strip that out. Uh, grep does have, I believe it is the H flag where you can just choose not to output the file name at all. And then you get this back, but this is not going to, uh, yeah, there, there's, there's a lessons learned, uh, but this is not going to be sorted in uh, a way that 
actually needs to be sorted from like episode one all the way down to the end. So like this best tip here, when we're not including the file name, uh, this is not episode one. Uh, I don't know what episode that is, maybe 10 or something like that. So let's get rid of the file name here. And uh, what we wanna do, yeah, I know I'm probably covering half of it. So let me go and just uh, sort that, but still I'm gonna kill out the file name. So it is output there. And when we sort it like this, you know, now it actually is sorted the way that we want because these files are ordered by date. So we have, you know, the year, year, month, month, day, day, and then the episode number. So, you know, here's episode one, episode two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, you know, 11, 12, blah, 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 all the way to the end. And this is sorted perfectly nicely. But we do need to do some other stuff here as well, because it's like, one, I don't really care about the file name at all. Uh, one common thing between all of these episodes is, you know, either says like lessons learned or best tips, and there's a question mark. So that question mark is super important. So let's expand our, uh, our I guess, command pipe here, and we will do a search. Uh, we will filter this down using cut, and we're gonna delimit this by a question mark, and we're going to grab the second result, like the second field. And now if we do this, then, whoa, look at that. So we got rid of the two hyphens that we don't really care about. And now we do have a completely uh, sorted list of podcast episodes. And, you know, this Learn Docker is definitely episode one. And this is uh, episode uh, 51 here at the very end. Or possibly that's 52 because uh, that has yet to be published, but it will be coming out on Monday. But that is what we want. But we want to make this just slightly, slightly uh, different. Because if I jump back over here to the code editor, really it's not just, and if I jump back down to, wow, did I just clear that? Okay. Uh, notice how there's like nothing before this, right? It just starts with a space. But we don't want it to start with just a space. I actually want to, you know, make this a bullet list for Markdown. And I also want to have the span here where we introduced the episode number. And, you know, it's a little bit smaller and it's using uh, Bootstrap 4 here. So it's like the text muted class to make it a little bit gray. So if I jump back down to here, you know, it sort of just like stands out a bit more. It doesn't like blend into the actual tip. So for that, um, we can actually use, let me just clear this again, go back to here. There we go. Uh, we can actually use said here. So I'm sure you're pretty familiar with said by now if you've watched a couple other videos on my channel. And said is great for doing finding and replacing in text. And if you watched my talk about using the command line from the other week, you know, set is also really good at deleting text, right? Like deleting the first line or the first couple of lines, like whatever you want. But set is also really good at adding text as well. So what we're gonna be doing here is uh, we are going to be using set. And by the way, I'm sure you probably know this already if you've watched some of my videos, but typically when you use set, you use forward slashes, right? But you can also use uh, a different character to delimit the areas of, you know, what we're gonna be doing with set. And the reason why we can't really use forward slashes here is because if we go back to here, then uh, you know there is a forward slash in that closing span. So I don't I don't have to worry about like escaping this stuff. So instead of escaping it, we can just use a different character. We can use the pipe character, we can use like a percent sign, like something unique. It doesn't really matter what it is. But what we want to do at said here is uh, pretty simple, right? We're gonna use said, we're gonna take a, a search for the beginning of the line, right, using a regular expression. And then we are going to change that to be uh, a bullet point for the markdown. And then we're gonna do span, class equals uh, text muted, small, close that quote. And then I'm just gonna drop in like a couple placeholder numbers here, right, a few zeros. And then, uh, you know, close out the span there with the forward slash. And uh, after that, I'm pretty sure that it is going to give us what we want. And now we have a completely, perfectly sorted list of best tips. Everything is in bullet format, it's all good to go. Like the last step now would be to increment these zeros to be uh, something else. Uh, you know, one, two, three, all the way to the end. So what I can do now, again, here is rerun the commands, but I'm just going to redirect the output here to something like, uh, I don't know, like best tips or whatever in my temp directory, uh, just writing the output of that to a file. So now if I go to my temp directory here and uh, we take a look here at the best tips file, then, you know, here we go. Uh, we have this, uh, you know, it's all being edited with Vim. Uh, it looks like there's a couple of trailing white spaces. That's that's what these red blocks are. I should probably remove them from uh, each episode, but not a big deal in this case. But now, you know, our second problem here is how do we get these numbers to go from like one, two, three, four, all the way to the end? So lucky for us, Vim actually will make this pretty easy to do. So if you go over something like this, like over this last zero in the column and you hit control A, Vim is going to increment that number by one. And if you continue hitting control A, then Vim will happily uh, you know, increment these numbers as many times as you want. So let me just undo all of that stuff here and uh, we'll go back to zero, zero, zero. Uh, but what's really cool too is like we can start combining that with other things that Vim can do as well. So if you hit control V to enter block selection mode, 
then you can actually just select, uh, you know, various things in a column, right? You can do one character, you can move this over however you want, like it doesn't really matter. Uh, and, and then also just another thing that Vim can do as well is if you hit uh, Shift G, that is going to bring you down to the last line in the file. So just to repeat that, I'm going to hit GG now to go to the top of the file, but Control V, that just enabled block selection mode. And now I can just do Shift G to bring me to the end of the file. That is going to select like the last zero in all of these columns here. And now I can just hit G Control A and Vim is going to happily increment all of these numbers. Uh, and what you see here is what we get. Now, I'm not really 100% on what the G command does, but I know you do have to hit uh, G before you hit Control A. I guess that like applies what you want to do to uh, every line that you have selected or whatever, something like that. Uh, if anyone actually knows for sure, for sure, uh, feel free to drop that into the comments. I'm sure we'll all uh, benefit from that knowledge. But you'll notice here after uh, number nine, uh, it starts to look a little bit weird, right? So number 10 and, and, and over, uh, they just have too many leading zeros. And I'm actually not sure how to solve this in a, a great way. But uh, in my case, it was pretty easy. Basically, uh, we just do Control V again to bring us into uh, block selection mode. Then we do Shift G, brings us to the end of the file. And then we just hit the delete key and there we go, problem is solved. I actually wasn't sure how to do it all in one shot. Like, could we have done this in some way where the extra leading zero wasn't there with uh, the 10? But it got to the point where it was like, you know, like that one extra action solved the problem. This is something I'm literally doing like one time right now. I'm not trying to like hyper optimize it to be like the best possible uh, solution ever made in the history of the universe. Uh, for me, this works completely fine. Now, so if I go to the very bottom here, right, Shift G, we can see that we have uh, our ordered numbers here from 001 all the way to 051, and we are good to go. But I did mention earlier that uh, some of these episodes don't have a tip. I believe it's episode 35. Let me just double check that one. Yeah, you can see here it just jumps from 34 to 36. So use the tools needs to be 36, basically. So that's step one that we need to fix. So use the tools uh, that needs to be 36 there, and it just jumps. And all of these need to be incremented by one. Uh, you know, there's multiple ways to do this. Uh, I just kind of did it the slow way where I just went through each one and I incremented and uh, incremented them by one because also the other episode, uh, what is it, 46? Yeah, 46 over here, soft skills and keeper test. Those need to be uh, the same here. Soft skills and keeper test, those both need to be 56, right? So I changed that to a 56 there. Uh, actually, 47 to 51 doesn't change because we removed that gap there with uh, 35. But you know, all of these right here, just need to be incremented by one. Uh, I'm not sure I have like a great way to do that. I believe it got a little bit weird if I do like control A there. Oh no, it seems to be working. Yeah, this is where it gets weird, right? I actually have no idea why this happens. Like, why did that jump from 37 to 40 just by hitting control A over that? Uh, if someone knows that, that would be amazing to put into the comments. But, you know, to solve my specific problem, I just went through all these numbers here up until 46, and I just, you know, manually incremented by uh, those by one, but you don't need to see me do that in this video. But that really did get us all the way there, and like the end result is uh, what we see right here. And if I just jump back over to my browser once more, uh, then we get this uh, final bullet list with all the episodes here. And it really, really, really did not take that long, right? A couple of uh, command line tools, grab, cut, and said, uh, we use sort as well. Combine them all together to solve a very unique problem. And, uh, you know, if you find yourself, you know, having to increment columns or just searching and extracting out like useful information from text, then, uh, you know, hopefully this video helped you out there. So if you do like the video, please give it a thumbs up because it helps a lot. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to answer them or not answer them, ask them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, with that said, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.